everybody, my name is Pat Carroll and today I would like to show you a new series of tools that Fordham has out and it's the K1053 series and um, let's do an unboxing and see what's inside. So, as we can see on the front we have our Fordham micro motor, dual hand piece micro motor kit. So let's see what is actually in the box. Let's just remove all the components first and then we can go through it. Okay, so it looks like this is the actual motor here that we need to take out. Oh, instructions. Always a plus. Let's see what else. Okay, nicely packaged. I always like to see things nicely packaged and safe. Okay. Out in a moment and here comes the unit itself. So just going to leave all the pieces to one side here first of all and make sure everything is out and, uh, the all important power cables and let's see what else we have here i presume these are our hand pieces we will this is just a bit like christmas morning really to see what's in here and on the other side we have some more okay so always ensure when you have a package like this with multi layers in it that you have everything out of it especially to maybe a leaflet a warranty um, some information relative to the item that you've just purchased let's see what we have here so and again when you're unpacking something like this don't damage the packages because maybe you might need to return it for some reason you know and there's there might be something missing or whatever and you need to just make sure keep all your packaging until you're happy and sure. For your safety, only use accessories rated for speeds of 50,000 RPM or higher. Warning, always wear proper eye protection and that is a very good pointer which we will discuss in a moment. Oh, that even feels nice in the hand there when I pick it up. I'm really going to be impressed with this tool, I know I am. So, I just mentioned a moment ago about the packaging. Here's a little thing here that could be very easily overseen. This is for taking and the collets out and changing them. But another little thing I noticed here, this beautiful little bit of packaging here, I know it's only a piece of foam, but I will store this tool in a case and this will come in really handy for me to save the components in. So if I get rid of the cardboard, recycle it, I must add, um, that will come in very handy. So let's move that packaging out of the way. Okay, so that's one of our hand pieces. We will go over each item at the moment. As I said, it's Christmas morning. I want to see what's in my uh, presents. <laughs> okay, so let's see what's in box number two. I am excited to get to the actual body of the piece itself, but like most things, we need all components. Okay, so this is the foot pedal. Again, each with its own independent cable and the plug to go into the unit itself. So yes, everything is fine. And we have a moving part here. Ensure that there's no manufacturer's packaging or uh, styrofoam or whatever. And I am actually really pleased to see there's no styrofoam in this packaging because, you know, I think it's a pet hate for most of us these days. Um, as you can see here, there's a couple of little holes here. This could actually be hung on a wall and we'll talk about the use of this later on. Um, as I mentioned, it is usually a foot pedal, but even for storage to have this facility, I think it's a really good idea. So not in the least surprised because four of them are just quality tools. Okay, so let's see what's in this box. Okay, so it's our other hand piece. We will go through both hand pieces as we progress. And First reactions to this for me are this cable, flexible, it can be stretched and it's not going to put any pressure on my wrist whatsoever by pulling back on me over using it over long periods of time. So this is a reciprocating handpiece, I'm going to leave the packaging on for a moment. I like to check that everything is there first when I get any new tools because if it's not and they say please return. Um, you want to ensure that you have all the packaging. Okay, so these are just some components which we will go through as well. Um, and again, little leaflets. Don't just 
disregard any of this information okay so and I'm going to keep each little packet with each component just to make life easier so let's just move that over there as well okay so this is just obviously just to stop the piece now as I mentioned a moment ago okay there's some other little these are obviously little brushes for this one and um, remember only one of these is a brushless motor the styrofoam there is a little bit of styrofoam in it okay for them listen up you had it in the other one nice piece of foam get rid of the styrofoam pet hate sorry okay so um let's go to the next box and here we go the heart of the tool okay so let's just have a look before i take the styrofoam out or sorry does the bubble wrap off and let's just see is there anything no loose components oh very nice little handle easy move it's not heavy it will be beautiful for bringing with me for um demonstrations and things so looking forward to that as well okay so i know i should read the instructions but i really want to have a look around this and just see what is here for me okay so the first reverse on and off speed control a digital readout i'm really like a digital readout uh, some people feel it's not overly important i just think um it's important if you want to do maintain the same texture on a piece to be able to take note of the texture I used. There is a facility on this, a cruise control, and we'll talk about that later on as well. So let's just have a look around the outside of the unit. We have some little magnets here. Another brilliant idea by Fordham. You can put your little burrs and things on here. If you're doing a multitude of tasks and you're continuously changing it, magnets are really good. Okay, so on the back, all of our information about the unit you know if you ever need to refer back to the manufacturer about anything we also have our power the foot pedal and the motor so we talk about the connections uh, some are very self-explanatory but okay so let's just pop this guy over here and of course the all-important power cable okay let's take a look at the handpiece so let's take off the plastic again all going back into the box just safe and secure Okay, okay, so let's see, first thing here, let's just talk about the cable. It's flexible, it's light, and maneuverable. There's nothing worse on a tool like this to have a very rigid cable that if it does happen to get in a loop, after a short period of time, the cables crack really easily. Um, and as you can imagine with units like this, sometimes it's not so easy changing them. And again, you might have to revert back to the manufacturer. So, you know, we do try to keep the cables as straight as possible without any loops or, um, and obviously the possibility of falling over them as well. So just to be careful um, and to keep the cables in such a way that our tools don't fall on the floor because, you know, we all know what happens when these things get damaged and they need to be replaced. So. What we have here is the, the brushless rotary handpiece, which connects into the back of the unit. We will connect it in now in a short time. Um, it runs virtually vibration free and a speed range of 1000 up to 50,000 RBM. So what we have here is what they would call a dummy bar. This is put in just for uh, transport and just for storage. What we don't want to do is leave this with nothing in it because the collet inside can collapse with the pressure on it after a period of time and then when you do go to fit your burr into it it's damaged so this goes in as a safety measure if you're not going to leave a burr actually in it and even for transportation i would recommend that you would um, take out your burrs because you don't want to damage those either and uh, put this guy back in so again we have our magnetic plates on the side of the unit a good place to store it okay i like to keep mine in little containers with sealed lids or, um, that they can't just pop open if they land on the ground which uh, works for me okay so that is the, um, the rotary handpiece let's get that guy over here so the next thing we have here then is this is the hammer handpiece okay so again let's get rid of the plastic pop this into the box okay so this connects to the front of the control unit um, this operates with a uh, 1000 to two and a half thousand strokes per minute 
Um, it, it actually is, it feels really balanced. When I picked this up first, I just thought uh, I was a bit unsure about it, but uh, now that I feel it, it just feels really nice. I can, I can feel the ergonomics and the design, and it feels very good in the hand. I am actually looking forward to using this with some uh, texturing ideas I have in mind. Okay, so let's get that guy out to one side. Okay, so let's bring in the heart of the unit, the engine, if you would like to call it that. So this has a two year limited warranty. The brushless motor design carbon brushes never need changing. Um, the maximum torque or watts output, 10 ounce in over 70 Newton or 230 watts. Powerful even at minimum speeds. So now let's take a look at the motor. The engine, the heart of the unit, whatever you'd like to call it. So this has a two year limited warranty. Okay, so it has a sealed housing, eliminates dust, noise and vibration. And there's the additional port for the brush type micro motor piece. So we have one on the front and we also have one on the back. Okay, so, and if you notice, they're completely different connections. So you cannot possibly plug the wrong one into the wrong um, socket. So there's no worries there. And a good indicator right here for power on and off. Brushless Micromotor is ideal for various applications at high speed and low speed and even mid-range. It's just such a versatile unit. Um, yes, I've used this before, but um, just the pleasure of unboxing my own. Um, I have waited for this day and I'm really pleased that it's here and I really am excited to use it on some of my own work. Um, as I said, I did have a play with one, but uh, now I'm happy to the proud owner to have my own one. Now we're at the point where we want to put this component onto the side of the body of the motor. So again, removing the plastic. As mentioned earlier, we have our screws. Actually one screw and our washer. So I'm just going to take these out and remove the plastic. So it's a small Phillips head screw. And let's put that on here. Some of these things can be a little bit tricky. So I'm putting the washer on here first. Pop it in through the hole and just bring over the unit. And just very carefully tighten that in here. And bring it up to where it should be. And just to tighten it down. So I'm not going to over tighten it. Remember that it is a, a piece of plastic. We don't want to damage it. So that's more than adequate there. And that is fitted to the side for the handpiece. Okay, so let's connect up our foot pedal. As you can see, there's no power going to the unit at the moment because this is the unboxing and we want to be sure that we have everything in the right place. So as with most components and tools that we get, there are stickers um, for things. These will probably eventually wear off after a period of time but just I should, hopefully we'll, we will be well familiar with it by then so there is a little dimple on the top of the plug which indicates the top here corresponding and we'll just pop that in there okay so that is our foot pedal in so for this demonstration we are just going to put on our handpiece at the rear. Okay, so you will see there are multiple holes here in it, but there is also a slot here which corresponds with the top. So be very careful to locate it correctly because we don't want to damage any of those pins. So it just pushes in nicely and tighten this down. Okay, so you don't have to get um, any grippers or any type of a, a mechanical device to tighten this. Just tighten it enough, safe and secure, okay? As I mentioned earlier, you shouldn't have any pressure on your cables. So now we have our unit with our handpiece in, and for safety, we will pop it into the cradle, just to keep that here, okay? Now, I'm just going to move these cables to try to keep everything um, safe and secure, and I'll move some of the other components out of the way. Okay, so now it's time to power up the unit. So here's my power cord, and I'm just going to plug it straight into the back. Okay, so we know that it's turned off. 
So if we turn the unit on, you'll hear it beeping to let you know that it is actually running. I can now select my speed that I want to use the handpiece at. I can have my, we're gone up to 50,000 RPM in this case. So I can choose to what I'm going to do at this point. Okay, so let's go through some of the buttons here on the front of it, okay? So here we have our forward and reverse button. So if I press this button once, it will show a green indicator light, which is forward in, as the color of the FWD letters indicate. And if I press again, it goes red, indicating reverse to the color of reverse. Now at the moment, we have port B plugged in at the back of the unit, which is indicating 50,000 RPM, the maximum speed for that handpiece. And we can see the red is on B, which is indicated on the back of the unit, and port A, as indicated here. So if I press this button, it will go green, indicated here by the A. So we can change from one to the other. So yes, you can have both hand pieces plugged in. I personally would prefer to have one away, unless I was doing a particular piece that required using both pieces um, quickly, um, not to be constantly plugging in and out. Yes, I, um, I would obviously have both plugged in. And to have that at a push of a button, I just think is fantastic. Now, our other option here is for the hand or foot. So if I press hand, we're on green and foot is on red. So now we are governed by the foot pedal. So I'm just going to change back here to our 50,000 RPM is um, the handpiece at the back. I am on the foot here as indicated by red. I'm going to change that to green. And now I can turn on the unit, the handpiece is here beside me. And you can hear, you. it is so quiet. It is just beautiful. It is nice, it's noisy enough that I know it's working, but it's just a beautiful, nice little sound off of that. So I can turn that off and obviously I can change the speed. The digital readout is letting me know for different size burrs. Um, and obviously as you notice, if I turn this all the way up, it is not moving and I don't feel any vibration. I can obviously feel that it's on, but it's just so minimal. There's nothing. I have seen pieces where it would literally be jumping around the table or your workstation. So let's just pop that off. Okay, so I'm just going to change here now to port A. And you will see 35, indicating 35,000 RPM for the other handpiece. The unit will only go as fast as your handpiece allows. So that's another good safety factor with this unit. It's not going to suddenly push a unit here, the handpiece recommended at 35,000. It will not suddenly turn the unit up to 50,000. So, as this is a sealed unit, there's no vents for air. Um, so that means no dust can get in. And that means longevity to the bearings, the collets, and the tool itself. Um, you can use the burrs and different things with a lubricant. But it is recommended maybe just to pull a small little bag over the handpiece and just allow the burr that you're using to poke out through that. And it just protects the handpiece. And if you're using any lubricant, obviously careful around electrics. But it is a possibility to use it with this handpiece. So, as we mentioned, we have the digital readout here. I'm going to set the digital readout now to 20,000 RPM. So basically, I'm on hand, green as in I'm going to control here to turn it on. We are on port B, as in red, um, and we are going forward here, indicated by the green. So let's just turn it on. And the piece is just working away nicely. So if I want to stop and start or I'm moving a piece, I think it might be handy if I could just free up my hands if I was holding a del delicate piece of work. So let's just stop that. Now, this has a wonderful facility of cruise control. So what we're going to change now is to the foot pedal. By pressing this, we're now on red, and we're going to click here. We're going to decide our RPM. So let's just go up to 25, 25,000. So if I, now it's going to run, as indicated here with the red light. I'm going to press 
the foot pedal with my hand, just for the demonstration purposes, and I'll hold it down till I hear the unit beeping. You will hear this starting and it will continue to run. So let's try that. So now I release the pedal, the unit is still running. If I press the pedal again and release, it'll stop the unit. Press the unit down, it starts, beeps again to engage, and now you're free to move your feet around comfortably and under you need to. So cruise control in a car is a marvelous thing, so why not have it on some tools? Obviously, to be safe, um, be conscious of your burrs. Let me just stop that again. If you're using um, very coarse burrs, that's, you know, not to leave them running, obviously, safety first and foremost, that uh, they don't um, catch you or, or your work, obviously, very importantly. Now, the last thing about this handpiece for now, and obviously there's so much that we could say about it is, it is brushless, you will never have to change the brushes in it. Um, and there is huge torque in this for a small little ha hand piece. And again, like the other piece that we talked about at the start, the ergonomics of these feel really nice in the hand. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to do some more work with this. So let's move on to the other hand piece. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, just pay attention to how the plug fits together. Um, there is a small little dimple here in the top of the round section, which goes to the top, and you will feel it just push in very easily. So it doesn't have to be forced in. If you're pressing hard against that, just be conscious that you're putting it in in the right fashion. And once again, this can fit in here into one of our uh, little holders, or even into the side here. Okay, so whatever is handy for you, depending on your work area. Okay, so we're going to move on to the hammer tool, if you would like to call it that. This unit does actually have brushes in it, which are changeable. Um, now, as we mentioned, this unit on port A will only go up to 35,000 RPM. But we also mentioned that the unit will only go to the speed that the handpiece allows. In this case, the maximum for this unit here is 2,500 RPM which is, for what this tool does, is really good. This area here will reciprocate, as in go in and out, for doing your carving, um, for doing your engraving. And to turn this unit on, and we'll talk about what I can do when I just turn it on here. So we're going to select port A, and that is indicated here by the green. We're going to go with the hand, as in green again. We're going forward. Uh, reverses a little bit, uh, it doesn't really matter on it. It will go in reverse, but it doesn't really make much difference because of it. it's just um, going in and out of the piece. So let's just turn this on. So at the moment, we're at the maximum 35,000 RPM. So we were operating there 35,000 RPM on the unit but it was actually only going at two and a half thousand here. So when I turn this on again, I can actually put my finger on this and there's nothing happening. It will only start to stroke against the work if I put pressure on it. So that gives you the opportunity to put it into a very precise area of your work and only when you apply pressure will the tool start to work and on releasing, obviously it will stop which is really good. There are units that is constantly stroking all the time, but this isn't. Okay, so that is that hand piece. So that is the Fordham K1053 series unit. A fantastic bit of kit. Really looking forward to making some work with it. Hopefully my work can do this unit justice. Um, Remember, to follow manufacturer's guidelines and especially all safety. Um, and safety glasses, of course. Hearing, um, especially if you're using the reciprocator, if you're doing it on something rather dense, it can obviously increase the decibel. So, you know, take all necessary precautions and I'll use all of your PPE equipment um, using any tools. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and a brief overview of the forum. Thank you. Goodbye.